Hi, and uh, welcome to another episode of Hard Truth with myself, David Vance, and Alana Mercer. Hi, Alana. Hi, David. Lovely to see you. Alana, I have to say, the introduction music to this is such a buzz. You're, Isn't you're, it just, right? It's, it's incomparable. It's, yeah, yeah. Uh, your, your husband uh, uh, does, most definitely deserves a credit for uh, for producing it. But uh, yeah, so the music's composing, good. Composing, composing, playing, and producing. Yeah. Yeah. No, he, he, he's the the absolute brilliant X man, and if that there was a livelihood in that, he'd probably be. That's his love. But I guess uh, having a PhD in engineering is more lucrative <laughs> than, you know, than standing with a hat, hat and begging. Uh, because this kind of music is hardly popular. It's too skilled and too complex. We should, you know, we should do a podcast about music one of these days, Alana. It, it, it's a subject that greatly interests, I think, yes. probably both, both of us. But uh, so anyway, so here we are back with another episode. And uh, whether you are watching this on the video channels, be that on, on YouTube, on Rumble or wherever. Um, you can just make sure, please, that you like, subscribe, hit the notification if you do that on the video channels. And of course, if you watch, if you're listening to this on the podcast channel, then do make sure that you subscribe to that, share it as well, so that whether it's video or audio, you get the, the full 360 degree experience. So Alana, we have an interesting selection of topics to discuss this evening. Uh, which is, um, I, I think, uh, you know, we, we, we've talked about so many things in some of our previous work together, um, but the, the whole issue of gender identity and gender wars, it, it's, it's very much there, isn't it? I mean, you know, it's a, it's, it's a thing and we, we can't ignore it. Let's see those pictures, the, the things you shocked me when I entered the studio. Yeah, Your, Alana's uh, been deeply shocked. It was, yeah. it was an assault assault on the eyes, so let me see those pictures and I shall yeah. describe uh, the segue into uh, the topic we're going to cover. Yeah. Um, I think I was looking at two rather unattractive men. It wasn't like they were out of the uh, a firefighter's calendar, you know. Um, rather chubby, uh, unattractive men. Where's that image? Um, so let, well, let, let's bring up. Let's bring up. We got. We've got this, uh, Jed. If you want to just bring up the, um, the, the 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 item, the guardian item. Bring that up. Yes. So, so, spoiler so, alert! If if, if you if, if you can't see this, you're lucky. You're really lucky, Alana. Yes, it is a real in the story. It's a real assault on the eyes. It's a, it's a young gentleman, I would say, um, flat chested, and he is chest feeding a baby. Um, well, just the way a lady would, I guess. He has a, a uh, beard yeah. and, a, and a mustache, and he's and he's reading. In fact, it's interesting physically. Um, I'm I'm a woman, right? Yes. <laughs> Can we agree on that? And we do, actually, definitely, yeah. I, without being indelicate, David, um, I'm sure you you know family members who are women and have done this this breastfeeding. And I was, you know, uh, of the age that we were pretty dedicated to bringing up children that were healthy. And I was very devoted to to um, to, to. I'm so bashful i can't even say it. let's say breastfeeding and did it successfully and i quite don't see how in order to get what they call in the bio in the biological sense the letdown sensation where the baby can actually feed because there's nothing stored in the in the tissue yeah. it's a brain signal and when the baby latches on you get the signal and the mother's able to feed i don't know how you can read uh, the way he's leisurely reading a very flat chested and he's chest feeding a baby and that's that's what i'm looking at yeah i mean it, it, what it, are your it, thoughts as you look at that oh hey listen it, it's it's a very remarkable image is what i think and and when you go beyond the image which is a bit of a shocker i mean in the headline if we can bring it back up again just for a sec the, the, i mean even the first sentence into this has issues for me so it, it, as you can see it says alana uh, you know a baby doesn't know what your pronouns are. Well, well, what's that got to do with what's what's that got to do with anything? A, a baby doesn't know what pronouns are. Yes, well, lots of things babies don't know. 
But, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know, I mean, I mean, I basically lost. I, I lost it at this point. <laughs> I know you read in little Alana, but I thought, well, what is this about? And then the language, and we are both people who love words and love language, and the language in this article is right off the scale in terms of I just think con confusion. You know, so. Uh, I think, that, I mean, it starts off with that, it amuses me. It was in, a, in an idyllic Canadian mountain town, surrounded by jagged, imposing peaks, <laughs> unless his chest, I like his chest, that the conflicting facets of Trevor McDonald's identity came crashing together. He was, and then it goes on to say, as you can, as we can, those of us who are reading it can see, um, McDonald, a soft spoken and holding a wispy goatee, was breastfeeding his first child at the time. Alana, have I fallen down a wormhole? What, what, what is this about? You know, I, I, as, as a libertarian, albeit a, a right-wing libertarian, I am quite open to the issues of privacy. Do what you may in the privacy of your home. Um, make the decisions you need to make so long as it doesn't impinge on public life, on schools, on curricula. And this is what I find, and I think you are trying, this is where you, you are uh, trying to, what you're trying to express about this article. There is more to just um, being a man, a, wo a woman who's transitioned to being a man, and then deciding that you would like the experience of breastfeeding after having had um, chest reduction, uh, breast reduction. There's yeah. more to this. You know what I find when I read this, yeah. because again, as it maybe I'm much old, I'm much older than this gentleman. Um, the issue of privacy. There's something in your face and almost kinky, kinky about how he describes things that are very natural to women. Yeah. In other words, yeah. um, there, there's a scene where he says that. Once he decided um, to have this baby and to breastfeed it, um, he and his partner, who's a gay man, were in a very fancy restaurant and the baby became fussy. Well, if I never took my child to a fancy restaurant and decided to display myself, never happened. There's a matter of modesty. And I think whether it's a woman or a man or whatever these people are uh, trans there's the issue of privacy we went to the drive-in so we could breastfeed in the car you know so there's that and there's also there's so much of the activism um it's almost like a, he's following yeah. sort of um don't you think i do a lot of activism in how he treats this this it's an experience it's, it's activism it's um so okay he's taking testosterone he's taking what is he taking he stopped taking testosterone so he could conceive and he could also chest feed right he's sure. not breastfeeding because he has no however why not shave off, off the beard and the goatee and just try and you know why is it a statement do you see what i'm getting at well, I, I totally do now because see I, I that is where so much of my questions come from if he wants to be well, we're using the, the, the pronouns here, but if if this individual wants to be like seen to be a mother, well, then that that's that's fine. But then maybe the thing is, and Alana, you see, again, we, we, we are very like minded in these. I believe people should be allowed to pretty much do what they want in the privacy of their own homes, as long as it doesn't frighten the horses. I am happy. <laughs> I, 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 I'm happy with that. You know, that's okay by me. I, I, it's not my business. I, I don't wish to impose my values on anyone else. That's not what I'm. What I, I want to do. But I agree. This individual is 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 precisely doing that. He is he slash slash she is definitely imposing activism. If not, as you rightly observe, Alana, and it's and not. Some, it's, and there's something else. Very many women choose against breastfeeding. The way he sought this, it was almost like he wanted, there was something quite kinky for me, uh, reading through and interpreting um, yeah. his words. Because when you read in the detail, he is not a successful uh, breastfeeder. Um, breastfeeding no. is not, not exactly easy. Um, no. You know, as, as, as a woman and a mother, I managed yeah. about 10 months of it at, at, with a child wholly feeding on the mother and getting all sustenance from the mother. So now you see that he says that he's he's able to chest feed, but he's got a lot of donated milk. 
from the community and assorted organizations that are supporting him in this sort of exhibitionism and this sort of uh, display. It's sort of an adventure for him. So mm -hmm. why not just do, he's obviously not sustaining this baby. And to me, when I look at what he's doing, it almost looks to me, David, and, and scold me if you want to, it almost looks to me like he's deriving sexual pleasure from this child latching on to his secondary sexual organs, right? Yeah, That's what yeah. it looks to me. I hate to say that. Well, well it, it almost feels to me in a way that the baby, because let's remember there's a baby here. The baby's a prop. The baby, exactly. it, the baby looks to me like a prop in pursuance of the points that this individual wants to make. And, and, and so I've got a problem with that because I, I think, you know, babies, um, I, I've got a young uh, granddaughter uh, who's who looks to be about the same kind of age? I can think of nothing more harmful for a, a, a young baby to be used in that way. And 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 the other thing, Alana, you're right about you know about breastfeeding. It's not easy for a lot of women. Um, no. and, and so, and so it's not easy, David, yeah. to sustain a child. Yeah. If he goes upon this as if it's a project, and it's if as if it's an experience, he has to, he owes to himself, or he wants to, and then he he had this little. De a debate with himself, um, an internal debate. Will this? Will I, I'm a man now. I'm. I'm. My gender identity is man. I've transitioned now. Will the act of breastfeeding conflict with that? Um, so he goes through this whole mm. Uh, mm. debate, uh, internal debate, and then once he starts e experimenting, it's almost sexual to me, David. It's not a, a motherly thing. He decides he likes it. Is he being honest with himself? Does he like it or does it bloody well turn him on? And that's mm. sick. That's mm. sick. I'm sorry. That's mm. what I get from this. And, uh, you know, the, I get that there's something quite kinky because he could have gone about having a baby, uh, feeding it, uh, sustaining it uh, bottle-wise, not, go, not going through the very yeah. many um, yeah. experiences he had going into bathrooms. He complains about bathrooms, that he can't just robe in bathrooms. Um and so on and so forth. He could have done his thing, had a child, whether it's... He also decided to use his anatomy. He hadn't had an, a hysterectomy and use his anatomy yeah. to conceive. Yeah. Um, that's quite yeah. strange as well, isn't that? It's very, I, I, it's, again, th this is the language of, of, I think, the demented. So, yeah, he, he used his anatomy. He used his anatomy to conceive. I'm sorry. I'm seeing an oxymoron there, but uh, or maybe just a moron. But either which way, you know, I mean, it is, it's very peculiar uh, at the very, at the very least. Uh, and, and actually, Alana, as I read through the article, you know, I wonder if we just we'll bring it back up for a second and we'll describe the bits for our, our listeners. Um, there, was, there was other bits in it that I found. Um, yes, yeah, so we've, we, yeah, we've, we, yeah, we've just shown a picture of him and a very nice, well, she quite grown up baby. It's not, not a sweet. Yeah, adorable baby. baby. The baby's adorable. Yeah, adorable baby. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah, just keep, keep just just scroll this one here, folks. Bear with me. Go up, up, up. No, no, yeah. I want to get into the thing, the, the detail of it down below. Yeah, just keep going down, going down. Yeah, yeah. He, he says um, some twelve weeks into his pregnancy. Yeah, see again, some twelve weeks into his pregnancy, Alana, his pregnancy. Do you know? I, I find that strange. I, 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 it's not that I am intolerant of other people, but it's discordant. The whole thing it sets me off because. It, the language is it's kind of wrong. Yeah. Um, so he says, like, I, I'm sort of flabbergasted. I, I, I mean, yeah. as, again, I, I'm conflicted as a libertarian. What I see here is not exactly what these people are sharing. What I see here is a lot of kink, a lot of display, a lot of yeah. insistence on having an experience that is not congruent, as you say, that is not congruent with his with his um, mentality, his mentation, his mentality, his, his sexual identity. Uh, he wants to be a man, yet yet he suddenly gets quite into the breastfeeding, the displaying, uh, being a man and having a, a child latch onto his, onto his uh, chest. Um, it, to me, it is very kinky, and it's, and it's sort of on a continuum where you see a lot of people insist on twerking their tushes in front of little children. Now, what is that about? Oh, that, what is that, that, that about, that, that, Dad, yeah. Dad, if not sheer kink? I am detecting some sexual kink in this, and this is this, and the, and the lack of privacy. I mean, 
as you say, we're libertarian minded, do what you yeah. may. Yep. Don't make the taxpayer cover this. Don't make it a gender out of it. Don't go into the schools and wag your tush or show how you chest yep. feed. This is where, to me, the kink comes in. Yeah, it does. And it's, it's interesting because he says that despite his surgery, um, he's been able to breastfeed or chest feed both of his kids now aged five and 18 months. So I guess that the photograph, folks, if you're listening, that we've been looking at is of the 18 uh, month year old. So, uh, but uh, yeah, uh, yeah, he, he fed using a combination of his own milk and donated milk from a community. I, I, you know, whoa, what, what's going on here? Uh, yeah, no, he, he didn't sustain this child, and this is he the, didn't. Yeah, he possibly wanted bonding, but because it's so public yeah. and it's so almost sexualized, I feel that it it, it has it has unwanted un, uh, sexual connotations to me. I read into this something untoward and it's definitely, definitely not good for the baby oh no no well, I mean, well you just wonder because even when they're that young alana even at 18 months babies are super aware of stuff that's going on in their you know in, in their in their family environment you know that the, they are very perceptive and you just wonder what what psychological impact this has in that 18 month old child um, well, he, david, he, he, david he's doing better than we are he has a book reading in toronto you know i'm sure he, he's he's probably near illiterate and has a ghost writer but he has a book book reading in toronto and he's collaborating with canadian medical authorities to study people yeah. like him and you know yeah i've done st statistics i have four four years of of very thorough statistics in a, in, a, in a South African university prior to affirmative action. And there's such a thing as confounding variables. And I wonder all the things that we've discussed, whether these people are going to detangle all the variables that go into this man's persona, the displays, the uh, paraphernalia, the um, breastfeeding, but not breastfeeding. Yep. The rest, the insistence on having the experience at the restaurant. Um, I wonder. Those are confounding variables. I wonder if our Canadian researchers, who've made him a sort of an honorary um, scientific object and, and partner, I wonder yeah. if they will look at all these things. Well, well, well in, 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 indeed. So, and isn't it interesting how people like this are given the public pulpit, which Others like us, we're, we're denied, you know. Yeah, well, yeah. It, it's, so it's like the most aberrant forms of kind of behavior are the most, well, are, are popular. Well, certainly in Canada anyway. I know you lived in Canada. Is it, does it surprise well, I, I'm, you? I'm Canadian. I'm, I'm actually, life in America is so fraught and so uh, stressful. I'm even thinking of dividing my time. I'm Canadian. Um, Im I immigrated from South Africa to Canada and then, then yeah. the US. So, um, love, mm -hmm. lovely country. I love Canada. But as you say, things, things have gone nuts in the Western mm -hmm. world. And have you ever watched the film Idiocracy? Yes, I have, Nita. Yeah, yeah. I, I, knew, I knew my soulmate broadcaster yeah, would that, watch yeah. Yeah. Idiocracy. That's, I mean, it really. It sums it up, doesn't it? It, it absolutely yeah. sums We've yeah. seen you see gar garbage avalanches, um, you know, water crops are watered with uh, Gatorade or whatever that drink was. <laughs> what, why not this? Why not this? Yeah, yeah. But but then we, 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 we'll move it on a bit. So 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 we've, there's this, as I said, this is a really strange story, but, but it's not in isolation because um, we, the other thing is that uh, I think made a bit of media in the past week or so is that Apparently, July the 17th was World Emoji Day. Yes. I, I didn't know there was a World Emoji Day, but yes, July 17th is World Emoji Day. And so there were a whole pile of new emojis um, released. Now, ordinarily, you might think, well, what, what, what are you two talking about emojis for, you know? But, but these, weren't, uh, these weren't your standard emojis by any definition. And I believe they're due out in September. They actually hit the, um, the, uh, the mobile phones and whatnot. But I yeah. think Alana. No, I think this, this gentleman has now an emoji. There's there's a, a a face of a new emoji that they they testing. Well, there's a not only is there an emoji um, day, but there's also 
a, a, an emoji consortium and they actually say david that they are overworked and they're very stressed they have to look at these things and decide oh well should we have um a gentleman with a, a moustache and a beard who's clutching his belly and he looks long suffering he doesn't look happy at all and that's the pregnant dad emoji yeah let, let's let's bring it up so our <laughs> our, our, our viewers can, can he looks see. upset he looks not a happy bloke <laughs> it doesn't look a happy bloke no but as you say and 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 and, and they've done the whole um diversity as well i can see in this so we're having the complete uh spectrum of colors of uh pregnant dads so it yes, is it, it, <laughs> david i have a feeling that the brothers will not be taking um <laughs> lightly no. to this. i mean the you know african americans are pretty manly types and they they don't quite like this there's a lot of abuse of transgender in that community or at least staying um staying closeted because you know it's a very testosterone driven uh culture yeah uh, they, these are these are waspy white guys oh they absolutely are there well i think we've got a i think we have a video which if we can play it and maybe describe it at the same time alana so just get you ready <laughs> uh right jed fire the video so as we wait for the video yeah so yeah so um so uh, yeah apple has unveiled um <laughs> Vampire, vampire emojis, uh, emojis. <laughs> and again, in different ethnicities, because it's really important we hit all yes. the, uh, the cultural <laughs> norms. Yeah, because remember, uh, I, thought, I thought that under the skin, blood was the same. You know, that all, <laughs> yeah, blood, yeah. all blood was red, but apparently, uh, yeah, we, identity of vampires is vital. Yeah, I mean, and then of course, I see some of the comments on Twitter, and Twitter is full of insane people. So there. <laughs> Does being a creature of the night reverse discrimination by skin brightness? Ah, there's a good one. All grey lives matter. Oh, yeah, I suppose there's a bit of humour in this as well, which is good actually. Uh, but 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 yeah. So we, we have. Um, I mean, emojis have entered the, the common um, sort of vocabulary. People use them all the time. I use them. I don't use many of them, but I use some. No, of them. no, you don't, David. I vouch for you. You. I don't see you using this. Uh, <laughs> I'm not long suffering really. gentleman, but I when it when it comes out, when it's inaugurated, I'm going to send you one. <laughs> yeah, well, I might start signing all of my messages <laughs> with the pregnant man emoji. But, but to me, I mean, it is a symbol of. I just think I don't know what you reckon, but to me, it's like our society is disintegrating so fast into realms of madness that, and and it's all to accommodate tiny little niche groups and. Okay, yeah. is that right or wrong? What, what do you think? You know, once again, we've always had, I mean, you go, go back to antiquity and you've always had colorful sorts and you've had transgender and gay and that's been part of, uh, but, but, but there's always been um, a culture of, of modesty. And I think that's where I find, I think a civilized culture is a culture where het and homo, you do it in private. Yes, uh, you don't do it in the boardroom, you do it in the bedroom, right? Yep. And so what i find so disturbing is not that there's um you know kink and a variety in human sexuality which i like to not know about i've I, you know i don't don't i'm pretty i can be quite prudish um it to me it's that it's been normalized on the public yeah. square that's so, the point and that's that, the, and that's yeah. really the point for me um to me a civilized society is where this gentleman does what he does in private and, and maybe just to to accommodate for old fogies, he shaves his beard when he's pregnant, right? Grows his hair a little bit when he's pregnant. Just, just fit in with culture um, and take take it to the bedroom, right? Take it to no, we have to be all in the face in the army. We have to be pregnant. Yeah, this is uncivilized. Yep, yeah. and, and and the thing is, Alana, it it spreads across the entire kind of social discourse because we keep being sort of hit with these different things. And if you express any concern or any uh, alarm or any hesitation that this is anything other than super duper great, you're instantly labeled as, you know, a bigot. You're labeled as, uh, you know, someone who's just not, you're not modern, you can't keep up with the times. Yeah. And, and, and as we, 
you're not with it, yeah. But but I know yeah, I'm with it, and it's, you're with it. But we we want some things to be done in. Yeah, privacy is the right word. What's wrong with privacy? Why do things need to be so public and shoved down your throat? And, other and than also so lewd. This is why the theme mm. of kink, the theme of kink. It is not that a teacher of of ancient history brings up a transgender in I don't know in in ancient. Greek, yeah, Greek Greece, yeah, and, yeah. and says children this has always existed and and uh, full stop it is to bring a person into the classroom that twerks their tush in in the, in the face of a, a young child whose sexuality whose whose arousal is just being established and these these are very very ugly and destructive things this is where I say that this has become pornographic rather than informative or even accepting. It's, as you say, it forces things on people and it brings it into the public square. I don't want to see heterosexuals copulating either. No, say Everything no. in civility, privacy, um, and, and that's that's how I think about this whole. But, but you see, Alana, an another good example of that is, and it's slightly different tangent, but like gay, gay rights parades. It, in my view, if people want to do that, well, yeah, okay, they can do it, whatever, you know, not, not again, I'm not bothered, but. But there's a lewdness that creep that that is part of some of those as well, which you know is is, is very uh, unfortunate, and uh, I, 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 so it it, it 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 that's what makes it difficult for me. There is that yeah. lewdness quality lewdness, to it. Yes, there's, yes. Th there's there's overt sexualization going on. To be quite honest, same with the, in the classroom. The what is it? The, um, the the drag queen. Or I mean, how did drag queen art ever become a thing, Alan? How's that? Yeah, and uh, we libertarians of, of, often make the arc, almost archaic point that schools should just be privatized, but then the private yes. institutions are leading with this stuff. So, yep. you know, yep. it's, it's the idiocracy on steroids. Uh, or are we allowed to say on steroids? I think we are, yeah. <laughs> we, 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 we give ourselves Does, up. Doesn't permission. that imply that testosterone is associated with strength? With um, machismo, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would be a, that could be problematical. No, yeah, I mean, but you're you're right, and the, the the institutions, the big corporations, are a hundred percent behind all of this. Yes. Um, they love it, which I find very concerning as well, because the infl the influence they have over more general society. You see it in advertising, you see it in TV programs, you see narratives being woven in, which again, yes. you know, are very very troublesome let's just put it like that yeah. very what, very troublesome. what did you think bef before i guess you want to close soon but what did you yeah. think about the emoji um the various um kings and prin princes or whatever they are with there's emojis with uh gender neutral or lady lady queens and kings and um all kinds yeah. of uh, different ethnicities and races is that sort of a hint that Every ambitious, can I swear? Every oh. ambitious, every ambitious bitch or bastard can infiltrate a royal family and trash the members. <laughs> um, become of, a kang. You can become yes, a kang then, if you do that. I mean, what is the inference there that we have? I think, the, I guess there is a king of Bhutan in Africa. No, I'm not sure, <laughs> but uh, sure, sure, certainly when I think of the uh, the monarchy, I think of England and Europe yeah. and Spain, yeah. right? Yeah. But you have now uh, all kinds of different uh, monarchs and and uh, queens. Queens is a good good uniting metaphor here. <laughs> yeah, so what, I, what did you I think, think about that? What did you think about that? The crowns, different yeah, crowns. I, I just laughed at them, to be honest. I mean, sometimes I think the best response to most of this, some of this is to laugh at it. It's it's so patently ridiculous. Yes. It's trying to tick tick little identitarian boxes. I know exactly what they're doing, you know, and there is, the right response is not to get angry about it or cross. That, that's a waste of our emotion. Mm -hmm. But you can have a laugh at it and then say, yeah, well, I, I can't, I, I would be very surprised, Alana, if you get any messages from me with a, with a crime, you know. <laughs> Don't think that's going to be happening somehow, you know. Well, just you, like, you're going to get all the worst from me. You're going to get the <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to uh, celebrate World Emoji Day by inundating your, your, 
your WhatsApp and your email with all this. Well, I'll, I'll, okay. So, so uh, next next July seventeenth, I'll be off social media. <laughs> so, <laughs> hey, Alana, we've got to the end of the show. Uh, the yes. thirty minutes has gone by really, really fast, which is which is great. I uh, love chatting with you. Yeah, well, Alana, thank you very much for being and for being part of this Hard Truth podcast. So uh, I hope, folks, if you've watched this, you've enjoyed it. If you've listened to it, you've enjoyed it. Just make sure you you, you subscribe, hit notifications, you like it. Um, we've got so many more conversations coming your way. Uh, but for now, that's it from me. And me. See you next week. Yeah, see you next week, folks. Bye, everybody.